Hey guys, welcome back to Bushcraft Nick. This video, I'm gonna be making a wood processing area or a cutting station, whatever you wanna call it. There's many different names to it, but we're gonna be doing that so it's easier to process wood that I cut and the sun's right in my eye, so it's a good time to get started. I'll be cutting on this tree, it's not too big. You know, I don't want a huge one, but I want it to be sturdy enough. This should probably get me about one half of what I need. Yahtzee! Let's bring this up. All right, before we cut this piece up, we're gonna get a second one, and then I'll get the measurements. This tree's already leaning down, as you can see, and 99% of it's dead. So we're gonna use this as the next piece. First step is taking these off. Yahtzee! Let's get clearing this up. This might take a while. Time ups, baby. Alright, well, we got both pieces right here. Got really hot, took off my jacket, it's 40 degrees, but you know, it's actually pretty hot once you're working. Oh, that's a piece of wood. Alright, well after looking back at this, whew, I'm a little too far in, but I might have got too big of uh, you know, too big of wood. <laughs> This is a plan. This is the plan, folks. So, this is much bigger than the other one. But I'm gonna have, I'm gonna cut two more pieces this size, and then I'm gonna kinda link and log them. So right here on both sides, I'm gonna cut a little indent that they slip right into, kinda like this. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but you know, it's an idea. So, they're gonna kinda link up like this. Then I'm gonna put like I said, a smaller piece connecting them, making them sturdy. A. And then another one in the middle, making them more sturdy. Tie all this together, and then the piece we're cutting is on top. Looking at this now though, I might leave it a little wider. And it's getting pretty cold, so I'm putting my jacket back on. probably turn this into a piece too but considering how light it is for this size it's so rotted
Once I get this done, I can finally stop having to bend down for everything. Right. Yeah, this is gonna be huge. This is pretty big. You know what, guys? I think I just cut myself the perfect piece to fill in this gap in the wall. So as you can see, there's been a gap here for quite some time. And since I haven't been in the fort in a while, this piece kind of came out on new screws. But I think what I could do I'll do it that. It's about as good as you're going to get it. Right here is not too much of an opening, but it's still kind of nice. The other side's filled up. It actually doesn't look that bad at all. And it's funny because I didn't even plan to do that at all today, but now we have a much smaller opening. And fourth looking good. So um, what I'm thinking, I got those four pieces right now. I might use that piece right there. And I might station the cutting area right there. But who knows? I'm gonna figure this out as I go. Let's change your battery, bud. Alright, I have the pieces I'm gonna use. These two as a set and those two as a set. These two are much bigger than those two, much heavier. But that'll make it more durable and last longer. Hopefully I don't have to replace this at all. It'll last me a couple years. But the plan right now is I'm gonna carve these up. So now we're gonna start making them into Lincoln Lodge, kind of. Oh, I hope that goes well, because that's the only plan I got for this. We're gonna start with the tinier set to do this, the lighter one, because I think it'll be a little easier just to try it out. So basically, what you need for this is just an ax and a saw. You don't even need, you could use many different things. But I got both right here. So we're gonna start right here. First of all, these gloves are getting in the way a little bit, as much as I love them. It should be looking something like this. These are the two markings for that one, and these are the two for the other one. So then basically, you don't cut, you don't cut straight through. Cut about a third of the way through the log. And basically, if you guys remember what I did to the back of the lean-to, you cut in a little bit, every inch or so, and then you get your, you get your ax in there and you chunk it out. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'm gonna be using my tinier Baco saw, Baco Laplander. Uh, this is very trusty. I've used this for such a long time. I uh, moved on to the, moved on to the Boreal 21 bow saw though. Best, so it's such a great product, honestly. So from here to here, and obviously you could do a little bigger, a little smaller, but the smaller the better, so it fits in nice and snug. So I'm gonna do a little smaller. So my markings are here and my marking it's about right here. Now this piece of wood is rotted, so it's gonna be a little difficult. But basically, wherever you're gonna start, going a little bit. So I'm gonna get my two my two markings where I'm gonna start and end. Start and end right there. A little more. So then you just do every other inch just like that. Try to go with the same depth. And you're gonna have to, you know, freshen it up at the end. Make it look really nice. Now this, this piece is hard because there's, there's a branch right here. So it goes against the grain of the uh, wood. I get a little knotted, but here we go. Alright, so it should look something just like that. That's how you know you're doing it right. And you just kind of twist it back and forth and they pop out.
Don't want to go too far though, or else it could lose all of its. Well, that's probably not safe. There we go. As straight as possible. You might, you even should get a knife just to carve it out. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it's even nice just to get a knife in there. So now you just repeat that same process for all the pieces and then it's gonna turn out really nice. So now to make sure you did it right, band them up. And find the height that you link them together in. Now I'll just repeat this for the other side. All right, well I got Dr. Pepper waiting for me up at the house, so I'm gonna make this quick. Let's get the other two done. So this one, I'm nowhere close to being straight on. So at that point, you know, just gotta jump it away. Just like that, it's all squared up. One more time. This one might not turn out too well because there's a branch in there. My grandpa's coming right now. He watches my videos. And there he is. So if you're watching this right now, Grandpa, I appreciate it. All right, well, my Grandpa just brought me lunch. So I don't have to go up. Got nice water. Nice chips. A nice old grilled cheese. So thank you, Grandpa, if you're watching this. Eh, who needs to wash their hands? No! My water! Alright, lunch is done. Time to finish this last piece. That lunch was delicious. So now we're gonna put them all, put these two up, you know, see. See how it turned out. This is perfect, perfect depth, perfect everything for this one. Quick lashing for these, quick lashing for those, and then just get some support beams. The support pieces are really gonna be are gonna be really tiny. I have a couple of pieces in mind that I've that I just cut down today by getting these pieces. But first, let's do a little bit of tying to get these together. I'm gonna jump right to the end when I'm when all these are lashed together because I had an SD card error, and I don't want to lose any of the stuff I just recorded. So I'll catch you guys when I'm tied up. Both tied together. That should come along really nice. So now what I need is to find a long piece that'll go underneath both of them, right at the bottom, like I said, to connect them and stabilize them. All right, I got the tiny light stick that we're gonna use to put underneath us to rest so they don't tip over. Basically, they're gonna run just like this. It's gonna go underneath one to the other. All right, so I finished it. I added this piece to the bottom and I tied it to support it. It's a little wobbly and loose, but that could be fixed if I had a lot more time. And to do that, you would do the same thing right here Connect on these two connecting them and on the back side you can also do that a frame I was talking about where right in the middle of them on the bottom you connect them So it's just tied together and it's not going anywhere or you could do what I did right here So even though it's a little wobbly I attached it to the wood shelter over there for the firewood So basically it's not it's not moving this could move a little bit but There's ways around it. You also dig a little ditch in the ground for it push it inwards puts it outwards whatever you want to do so I'm gonna do a practice test. I'm gonna cut a log on it and we're gonna see how the cutting station works. All right, so for the example piece, I'm gonna use some random dead thing. So basically you put the wood, put the wood right here. So what I'm gonna do later is chop off these just so that there's more room for me to work right here and chop off this side. All you gotta do is get the piece, put it at whatever length. I'm a lefty, so I'll be cutting on the left side, but if you're a righty, obviously you'll be on the right side or you Flip it around. You, you can cut in the middle, but keep in mind the whole point of this is to make sure 
that when you're cutting the log or whatever you're cutting doesn't go in on itself so it's harder cut and if you do the middle that's what's going to happen so for me you just put on whatever length you want so i'm going to cut it right here and then hold down it's, it's going to be sturdy and because of gravity this piece is just going to fall right off instead of normally going in on itself and that's pretty much how it works you just cut it right there there are many ways you could make this sturdy, like I said, but for now, until this fails on me, I'm not going to do that. But the main things I'm going to do next, if I do have to make this sturdier, like I said, is get the pieces to go along the side right here, just to keep it from wobbling, because this, the middle piece is doing its job, but it could do a little better. This is one of the many ways you can make a cutting station in the woods. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a cutting station in the woods. I'll see you guys in two weeks for a new video. See ya. Bye. Have it your way, have it your way, have it your way.